killing us. Suspense is killing us. That's what it does. Hey everybody, I'm Kyle Rosedahl. Welcome back to Make Me Smart. And if it's not welcome back, if it's your first time, where you been? Anyway, make today make sense. That's what we do. Welcome regardless. <laughs> I'm Amy Scott. I'm <laughs> right. in for Kimberly Adams today. Uh, Thanks to everybody joining us on the podcast and on the YouTube live stream for This Is Economics on Tap. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we're going to do the news as we usually do. We're going to do a little bit of um, uh, beverage checking. Then we'll take a break uh, and then we'll play a game half full, half empty. Amy Scott, what are you drinking out there in Baltimore, Maryland? Oh, it's sad today. I'm drinking some peppermint tea with some Manuka honey because I've had this. Does not feel good? I don't know if you guys have had these endless colds that seem to be cycling through households, but that's that's me this week. It's California, man. We don't get those winter colds. We're outside. Oh, you totally do. You just don't call them winter colds. No, I do. No, I do. No, seriously. Seriously. It it doesn't happen out here. It doesn't happen out here. Maybe it's because your kids are are grown and they're not in those germ factories that that are elementary schools anymore. That could could, could totally be. Totally 100% could be. So you're having tea. I'm having... I'm having a hazy uh, IPA from uh, Beachwood Brewing down in Huntington Beach. Same uh, four pack that I bought two weeks ago because I'm not drinking a whole lot of beer these days. It's tough to ramp up after dry January. I'll tell you that, man. You have a couple of beers after dry January and you're like, whoa, what is going on? So anyway. Yeah, welcome to my world. That's me pretty much every time. So I know. I know. Let's see. We got a Guinness in there. I know. Oh, well, nice. also, ain't nobody's getting any younger either. Anyway, there's a Guinness in there. <laughs> There's an espresso martini. Look, Amy Scott, you and I have known each other for 20 years. Cut it out. Ginger beer with vodka from LJ Payne. There's a Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Luke Silly's. Campari and soda. I don't even know what that is. That's a classy drink. I guess so. Holy cow. Maxwell Marquardt having a Green Empire side business IPA. Very nice. There's a lot going on out there. A lot going on. A lot, of, a lot of beers, actually. Pierogies with iced tea from Daniel Romay. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Um, so let's do some news, I suppose, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. You want to go first? Okay. All right. I feel like I've been I dying to talk about this one, so I, I want to hear you I talk about can't, it. I can't. I cannot. It's so the news item that I have picked, and it's a little outside our lane, but you can't not talk about the story. The uh, filing yesterday, or maybe it was two days ago, late in the afternoon, but I think it was yesterday, by Dominion yeah. Voting Systems um, saying that their suit against Fox News ought to go forward. And as part of their filing, they have um, submitted to the court and thus released to the public a bunch of internal documents from Fox News in which we discover that Fox News primetime hosts are deceitful, um, dishonest, misrepresentative, and absolutely full of it in terms of what they actually believe and what they are saying to each other and what they are saying on air. It's absolutely extraordinary. It's absolutely extraordinary. Gives lie to the whole thing. I, yeah, I can't. scary. I just can't. It's, it's terrifying. T- it's appalling. It really is appalling. Definitely worth reading these documents. Uh, the, the concern about stock price, the concern about yeah, turning off really, viewers by right. telling them the truth. Right. Uh, it's it's bananas. Made me glad to work for public yeah. media. I mean, or just a media yeah. company that takes truth seriously, right? And values right. it and more than the bottom a- line. Absolutely. And 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 look, Fox News has an absolute first right, first amendment right to exist, and and nobody's saying shut them down or anything. But one would hope that, and, oh God, even as these words come out of my mouth, I I understand how naive they are. One would hope <laughs> that Fox News viewers, having now seen behind the curtain would take Fox News for what it is, which is a propaganda outlet, but I guess they won't. I just, I don't get it. Yeah, I, get it. I, d- I did check I the Wall said, Street Journal story ahead. about yeah. this today oh, I know. because it's another Murdoch-owned uh-huh. company. And, yep. you know, it, yep. it's there. You you can read it right there. So yeah. I hope yeah. people see Brian this. Brian Stelter. Yeah, uh, totally. Brian Stelter, who wrote, um, uh, Sorry, Brian Stelter, who used to work for CNN, but got but got fired, actually, for his, in some part, his stance on what Fox News was doing. Yeah. Um, because Chris Lick, the new CEO of CNN, wants it to be more down the middle. Uh, Brian Stelter wrote a piece for The Atlantic that I highly recommend that we'll put on the show page. 
a totally interesting take from a guy who's been watching television news, <clears throat> excuse me, for a long time. Um, and just talking about the deceit and the lies and the, and the misinformation. It's, it's truly just, it's terrible, 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 terrible. And I just, can't, I can't handle it. Can't handle yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what do you got? Well, it's depressing in a different way. Might as well get this out of the way <laughs> before yeah. our game. We'll cheer you up in a minute, promise. Um, so, you know, I spent the better part of last year reporting on sea level rise and housing in yeah. South Florida. Mm. Um, and today there was kind of an interesting update uh, to what we were basically looking at, which is, you know, a housing market in Florida that seems to be untethered from the reality of the risks they face right. from climate change. So... Axios uh, did a piece about this study published yesterday in the journal Nature Climate Change. And it looks at basically how real estate prices are overvalued um, in many, many states when considering the flood hmm. risk that's sort of unpriced. And so they estimate that real estate prices are overvalued nationally by as much as $237 billion oh my when compared to flood risk. Yeah. Uh, in Florida, which is no surprise that that's the biggest number. It's $50 billion. In California, $17 billion. Texas, $10 billion. Several other states are in the 3 to $4 billion range. And there's some pretty high-profile groups involved in this report. It's a collaboration between the Federal Reserve, uh, the First Street Foundation, which is a nonprofit hmm. that models flood risk and other climate hazards, as well as a couple of universities. Um, a lot of this unpriced risk, which I think is interesting, comes from properties that are technically outside of FEMA's 100-year flood zone. So those are mm -hmm. houses with a 1% annual chance or probability of flooding. Um, but that's increasingly going to change as more and more properties are in flood zones, not just from coastal flooding caused by sea level rise and storm surge, but from you know, you're familiar with this now, pluvial flooding, the heavy rainfall yep. uh, that's yep. intensifying as well. I didn't know and that's what so, it's called. That's a great name. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I think this may be the first time I've actually said that word because I <laughs> try to avoid jargon, but I guess maybe words like pluvial have to get in all of our vocabularies. But anyway, a quote from the study is, uh, <laughs> in general, highly overvalued properties are concentrated in counties along the coast with no flood risk disclosure laws, meaning a seller doesn't mm -hmm. have to disclose mm -hmm. that the property floods, mm -hmm. um, and where there is less concern about climate change. Low income households are at greater risk of losing home equity from price deflation and municipalities that are heavily reliant on property taxes for revenue are vulnerable to budgetary shortfalls. Um, which is, you know, basically what our whole second season of How We yeah. Survive is about. And I don't mean this as just one giant plug, although I kind of do. But um, no, totally. what I found you interesting, me? <laughs> I'm glad the Fed and others are paying attention to this. But um, thinking of this as a bubble, I think, is especially scary because bubbles pop, you know, and it mm -hmm. leads to calamity. So what happens when the market starts to price in this risk? Does it happen all at once? Is it more of a deflation? I don't know, but I think it's going to be really um, scary, frankly. I, I'll bet you there's going to be some big insurance company that's going to come out uh, and and give some estimate, and then that's going to start the stampede. And then it's going to be like, you know, how do you go broke, right? It happens very slowly and then all at once. And I think that's what's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you got to wonder Man. who's who's shorting the market. Who's going to somehow find a way oh, to profit from yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because because look, this is a terrible thing to say, but Wall Street will make a boatload of money on this. Wall Street will yeah. make a boatload. Yeah, and the taxpayers will be the ones that are right. left holding the bag. Of course. Totally. So, uh, all right. On, on that note, uh, so uh, we're going to take a quick break. Then we'll come back. We'll do a round of half full, half empty with Drew Johnstad. Here we go. Half full, half empty is the game. Drew Johnstad is the guy in charge. He does the music as well, as you will hear in the credits. Uh, he gives us news topics. We tell you how we're feeling about them. Drew Johnstad, begin. Are you half full or half empty on using an algorithm to set the rent prices? <laughs> wow. That's know. a good one. 
We talked about this on tech this week. <laughs> Says the, the reason I said that is because I actually. Oh, that's so funny. I heard that interview, change. but it was. <laughs> I heard that interview, but it was 4.43 in the morning, and I hadn't had my coffee yet, so it kind of went by me. <laughs> Don't blame to be you completely for not honest. quite processing. Total transparency. Well, so I'm half empty because this is this all came about because uh, ProPublica did an investigation of this company called RealPage that sells software that helps landlords uh, set rent prices. Mm -hmm. Um but found that this, you know, maybe artificially inflating rents, because if you have a market where a lot of landlords are using this and sharing their data about what they're charging, uh, and even in some cases encouraged by the software to withhold apartments so that they can charge more, um, there is a risk of, if not collusion, at least uh, an, an artificially uh, expensive right. market, which we know is you know, increasingly burdening people who pay rent. I'm, I would say I'm half empty, although I did once have to set the rent on my house. We rented it out for a year oh. and it was really hard to figure out what to charge. So how did you, you know? do it? No, that's it. I'm dead serious. How'd you do it? Yeah. Well, we honestly, we looked at our mortgage payment and we were like, we got to at least cover that plus some plus expenses of maintenance. Plus a little bit. We sure, weren't looking to make a profit and we we kind of looked around at other comps, you know, to see if it seemed fair and it, it seemed fine. It went, we, it, you know, it sold. Certainly I'm not, I wasn't in the business to make money, but uh, yeah. it is a bit of an art, I would say. I'm, I'm sure it is. So, so in the end, did you get your, what you were asking for in rent or did people push back? How did it work? We did. Yeah. Uh, this was a, a like a one-off, you know, sabbatical kind of situation. We found yeah. another academic couple who were looking for a temporary place to live. It worked out really well. They were great. Huh. I think if we had been like va renting a vacant house, yeah, we probably sure. would have had to pay more attention to the market and probably could have gotten a little more. But honestly, we just really wanted it to be easy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I totally and I can understand. I, totally I mean, companies that. using the software want it to be easy too, right? And this thing spits right. out a number and you're like, okay, that's what the going rate. Okay. Sounds good. But to it me. just Boom. It, it takes out that potential for negotiation um that you might have. And so anyway, the Justice hmm. Department's looking into it. There have been several lawsuits. It's gonna be interesting to watch where that goes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, Drew, number two. Half full or half empty on public policy video games. <laughs> so this is an interview I did uh, with a woman who is the chair of the Federal Games Guild. They do policy-oriented games for the federal government, the most well-known of which is probably something called the Fiscal Ship Game from, uh, I guess it's Brookings. And you have to like do, but you you set yourself a bunch of policy objectives, and then you try to figure out how to match the federal budget to those policy objectives. I will tell you, it's really hard. Her name was oh my god, Elizabeth Newberry. She's at uh, the Wilson Center. Super interesting, really hard. Uh, but look, I think gamification is a valid educational and public policy awareness tool. I'm half full. I would say I'm half full too. It's a great way to learn. I mean, I've seen my kids learn so much from games. I right. think right. it's awesome. But Kai, didn't didn't we do something like that years ago? Didn't Marketplace oh my God, have like we a did. budget? We did. Game? Budget Hero. It was really it was, popular. It was, Budget it was, Hero. It was, yes. It was Budget Hero, and it was through, I think we did it through, God, I don't even know who. It was St. Paul and somebody, but anyway. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. Those games are really hard. I wonder if the internet archive can resurface that I'm for sure us. it does. Somebody if look so, up Budget we'll put Hero. it on the show page. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You and I have been here too long, but that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> Drew, save it us. Let's go. Next, please. Next, please. Half full or half empty on incorporating ASMR into your company's marketing. Okay. Oh, God, my scalp. I get confused every time about what ASMR is. Can somebody help me? By which I mean Amy Scott, you? Uh, yeah, I'll do my best. I can never remember exactly what it stands for. It's like autonomous. It stands for true. autonomous sensory meridian response. Which means what? So people, some people report getting this like tingly, sen pleasing sensation when they hear certain sounds, like okay. fingernails tapping on a hard surface. I'm tapping a book here. A, Don't get weird on sound. me. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and it's really popular. There are all these videos. Um, 
And so this guy, we had this guy on the show, I think on Wednesday when you were out, um, who has this business, he cleans rugs and he puts posts videos of the rug cleaning oh, online I've seen and those. they've gone I've insanely seen viral. Oh my God. They're so watchable though. Because oh, this totally. is really weird that I'm actually I'm actually getting fired up about this. Those rug videos, <laughs> they take these dirty, disgusting old rugs and they clean them and they shampoo them and this and that. Wow, that's crazy that that's what that's yeah, all it's about. Super, super satisfying to watch. to watch. Yes. It is really interesting. And he was just so charming. He's making like a, a thousand bucks a month or something on the side doing Good this. He's not shutting down his cleaning business, but I thought that was pretty cool. So I would say I'm Good happy. Wait, yeah. this is marketing. The question was specifically about marketing. Eh, Wait, Drew, what was the question? Give it to us again. Oh, I don't know. I guess the question was half full or half empty <laughs> on boosting your business with ASMR. If you're going to oh, be technical I, about it. You know, well, this guy so, in right, Accra, so, yeah. Ghana, I'm half full. Yeah, sure whatever i mean look you got to make a living right come on wow totally. that's so interesting about the rug guy now i have to go back and listen of course now we discover that i don't listen to my own show when i'm not on my own show but that's all i know we i'm just gonna milk before. it for I all, I, all I, I can that's right that's right all right next drew please help taco bell is opening a cantina <laughs> in hollywood are you half full or half empty on having uh alcohol at your taco bell i'm half full next question <laughs> uh, a beer and a taco yeah it doesn't need discussion well right. i'm what? I... Uh, wait so what in california one location uh uh it's the first one in los angeles county i don't know for sure state you know i have to say i'm half empty and i'll i'll tell you why because i think of taco bell is like where i go for cheap food that's like okay <laughs> but I, when I go out for a drink, you know, I, I'm expecting something a little more, I don't know. So it's a... <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Sorry. You're just sounding a little snooty tooty there, Miss Scott. That's all I'm saying. I am. That's I know. It's not what all I right, mean right. to, because I love Taco Bell. Everyone, you know, regular right. listeners there will know go. this about me. Uh, yes. We've had a whole conversation I just, I can't get that. excited right. about a booze in the in the drive through <laughs> <laughs> which anyway oh my lord drew let's move on let's fire up the poll oh is this are it all right poll? fire up the poll so those of you who are listening in real time uh on the youtube uh live stream you know what to do uh hopefully mel or somebody is going to feed me the answers once all y'all uh do the poll thing because i have not yet figured out how that works but um, Drew's going to read it. Emmy and I will kill some time. We'll give you like a minute to do the poll, and then we will see how you do on half full, half empty. Because look, it's a challenge. Drew, go. Are you half full or half empty on the trend of TV and movies with more sort of eat the rich type storylines? Oh, that's a good one. All right. All right. Holding on here. We're holding. I, I should say that this was a story that aired on Marketplace on Wednesday when I was out. So I have not heard it. It was Kristen Schwab. And I do understand it was a very good piece, very kristen -y piece. She's, <laughs> she's, you know, she's finding her voice and she's doing great stuff for us. And I love her pieces. Yeah, it's been really fun. So I'm going to have to go back and listen. All right. Well, we'll you see. Do. We you won't have to hear see. me. You can just skip the lead. I, I just, oh yeah, no, because really that's what it's all about. It's somebody else doing my job while I'm taking the day off. I'm like, I can't handle that. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't handle that. <laughs> Well, I think Which vacations is, are appropriate. You should just separate oh, yeah. yourself from the work. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's all just how hung up. Ah, uh, whatever. Never. It's not Kai's therapy session today, is it? <laughs> it's all about how how hung up I am on my professional identity. But anyway, mm, that anyway, is a whole other right, podcast. We'll you, which it it is a whole yeah, other podcast. I'm here for actually, it. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not doing that. I have thoughts. It's been too long. It's been too long. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, do we have any results? <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know. Uh, so look, uh, it's been 173 votes. We're going to give you guys 10 more oh, seconds. Wow. And then somebody is going to have to slack me the result. Well, you guys have to uh, weigh in first. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, Amy, we have to weigh first. in first. Okay. Whew. All right. Amy, um, you go first. Oh, well, okay. So I'm half full because I may have my own class hangups. <laughs> and I think it's super fun to make fun of the rich and enjoy their suffering. Uh, and I thought Kristen's story, which I recommend, was great because it explains sort of how what we've all collectively been through the past several years has kind of contributed yeah. to this 
uh, this trend and all the shows she talks about. I mean, I haven't seen Succession, but The White Lotus. Oh, really? Uh, Glass Onion. Uh, what What are some of the other ones? The Menu. Um, the menu, the super oh, the menu dark was stuff. Weird. Is, is that the one with was is. that the one with Ray Fines? Yes, where he plays the chef I, and I, I walked yeah. out. I had to walk out. It was too you weird. You did? It I, is well, I walked weird. out of my living room. I mean, it was totally bizarre. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding count. me? And I'm a I'm a huge Ray Fines fan, but are you kidding me with that thing? Glass I have onion, a feeling I, love. I know what? when you walked out. Yeah. 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 What White Lotus? I made it like through halfway through the first season and then bailed. Uh, Succession. You have to watch Succession. It is incredible. Okay. Forget the forget the whole eat the rich thing and billionaires doing all this stuff and that's disgusting and all that jazz. The performances and the dynamic and the way it's done is just spectacular. Truly. Cool. And the next season. No, the next season drops on the twenty sixth of March. Believe me when I tell you that you and Alex, after the kids go to bed, you guys should just binge watch it. Honest to God. All right. It's so good. I know what good. I'm doing tonight. It's so, so good. It's like gripping. Anyway, so here's the poll results. And I, they, wait, they, they were yeah. there. Mel, God damn it. All right. Sorry. <laughs> now we're going to get the E. Now we're going to get the E. Eat the Rich Storylines in Movie and Television. The, glad, the poll is complete with 178 votes. 74% of you are half full 25% are half empty and clearly 1% cannot make up its mind. So yeah, eat the rich is good, I guess, is the deal. We like eat the rich. That's right. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, and not to drag this out, but wealth inequality, it in many ways is the worst thing that we, that we face in our society. It's oh, God, responsible yeah. for so many other problems. And so let's have a little fun. You know, I'm sure yep. not all rich people are like that, but it's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, it is fun to watch. All right. So uh, thank you for participating in the poll, everybody. Um, yeah. And with that, I think we're, we're done, right? Charlton, hit that thing and we can move on. Ha. All right. We have made it through another week. Congratulations, everybody. We are done for today. We are off for Monday, President's Day. In the meanwhile, send us your comments, your thoughts, your questions, uh, something you want us to cover, something you don't like that we covered, whatever, honestly, just whatever. Let us know. 508-UB-SMART. Those are all letters. U-B-S-M-A-R-T. Or email us, make me smart at marketplace.org. Make Me Smart is produced by Courtney Berg Seeker. Today's episode was engineered by Charlton Thorpe. Drew Jostad wrote the theme music to Half Full, Half Empty. Antonio Barreras is our intern. Mel Rosenberg, Emily McCune, and Antoinette Brock are the team behind our Friday game. Marissa Cabrera is our acting senior producer. Bridget Bodner got kicked upstairs. She is the director of podcast. Francesca Levy is the executive director of digital and on demand. And we're out of time.